top. That's the best intro I've had in this class ever. Thank you, guys. Okay, so you know we don't waste any time. So let's close our eyes. Let's lift our hands. Jesus. Jesus, we welcome you right now. Father, no time, no time is wasted with you. One minute in your presence is everything. So come, Holy Spirit. I ask for your convicting whirlwind spirit to come into this room and for people to leave saying, that is not what I was expecting. But now there ain't no going back. Yeah. It's dangerous to come into a room with Jesus. And Jesus is in this room. And so Jesus, we worship you and we honor you. We begin to turn our affections towards you. We begin to turn our affections towards you. And we tell you right now, whatever you ask this morning, whatever you call me into, I will say yes. Whatever convicting word, whatever nation, whatever position, I will say yes to you, Jesus. Because you are worthy, and you are worth it, and you are perfect. And so I make a decision right now. Father, we make decisions right now in our hearts to say yes to what you say. We say yes to what you say. I love your presence. Let's lift our hands. Thank you, Jesus.
but it's the picture of our bridegroom, Jesus. You must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship. For they raid our vineyard of love to ruin what I have planted in you. Will you catch them and remove them from me? Passion Translation. Will you catch the foxes in your life that are ruining our relationship for me? Because you can't reach children, you can't reach teenagers, you can't reach marriages, you can't reach nations if you've got foxes in your life. Everything that blooms will be eaten. So before we go anywhere, This is somebody's catching season in this room. The Lord woke me up at 2.47. And I went to the prayer room. And I heard the Lord say, tell them it's catching season. Because if you don't catch those foxes that are hindering your Jesus relationship, don't worry about the nations if you can't get your own heart pure. Okay. Sorry. Went too fast, right? I'm going to slow down. <laughs> you can't purify a nation with an impure heart. If there are foxes in your heart, you will check your Instagram likes or loves before you check your heart with Jesus in the morning. If you have foxes in your life, you will text your boo thing before you text Jesus. Y'all know I send Jesus a text every morning. It's in my notes, of course. Because it's not, you know. I know some of y'all are like, what number you got? Oh my gosh, you really are no one sick. Every morning, I text Jesus before I text anybody else. Because you know I'm on that phone. So how dare I text you more than I text him? Not let that fox eat my vineyard. There is nothing more valuable to me than Jesus Christ, His Father, and His Holy Spirit. And if you get in the way of that, I'm going to call you a fox. And if my phone gets in the way of that, I'm going to call it a fox. And if you're like Natalie and you, you have a fox in Instagram, you just delete it all. Am I right? How long you not been on there? Like a year. Because she said, I choose the lion over the fox. And so if you're going to reach anybody, but especially if you're going to reach children, Satan's hit list people, get rid of the foxes. That's enough, yeah? Get rid of the foxes. A fox could be sleeping in when the phone goes off. The Lord told you, get up and pray. And you say, I'll do it another way. A fox is sin that's outright, and you know it's outright. I shouldn't even have to talk about that one. But if you've got outright sin in your life, private sin, it's a fox. And while you want Jesus, and you want his kingdom, and you want to change people's lives, you have a fox eating your vineyard. And every piece of fruit that God might produce in your life is gone before people can eat it. 
because a fox ate it for you. You must catch those troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship because they raid our vineyard. Doesn't he love us? Doesn't he love us? I like that. I don't want somebody who's like, I mean, that's okay. We'll just cuddle with the fox, you know? As long as we can still cuddle, we'll just have a fox in there too, and you know. I want a man, right, to say, you better get them foxes out of our vineyard because I'm all about you. And I love you, and I want you, and I'm not sharing you with a fox because I'm a lion. And I devour. Now that's a lover. I'm asking you this morning to choose the lion over the foxes. And if you have to delete it, delete it. You might not be watching things you shouldn't watch, but if it takes your time from the holy word of God, get out of it. And don't get your political views. Don't get your friendship views. Don't get your friendship goals. Don't get your relationship goals. Don't get your ministry goals off of somebody's Instagram. Get your news and your updates from the Holy Spirit of God. Then you know it before everybody. I'm not opposed to Instagram. I'm on it. I'm on Facebook. I'm on everything. Like somebody believe in Jesus. But the moment it steals my Jesus, it's got to go. And I might love you so much, I'll share half a taco with you. That's love. That's my first love language. And Nat told me I have to stop telling people because people buy me tacos everywhere. I said, why would you ever hinder the blessing of Almighty God in my life? <laughs> Everywhere we go, I'm trying to diet, I'm trying to work out, because I'm trying to be 120 and still preaching the gospel. And so everywhere we go, they're like, we got you tacos. And I'm like, I'm going to see this house is anointed by God. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll share half a taco with you. We can be best friends. Natalie is my best friend. The moment she becomes a fox, she's got to go. Right. We tell each other almost daily, God over you. We'll start talking in the morning, and whoever's been closer to the Lord will say first, have you prayed? <laughs> like, we'll fight over it. How much of the Bible have you read with all the negativity today? You better get in that prayer closet. <laughs> Y'all better get real friends. I don't know why I'm going so hard today. It's because we have a limited time. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Usually we ease in by the third class. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm actually not. But you know, okay, I'm sorry, it's the confliction. It's the com you must catch them. And I heard the Holy Spirit tell me in prayer this morning, it's catching season. And some of you already know, and you're dreading it. You already know, and you are actually hurting over what you have to let go to be closer to his heart. And that's okay. I've been there too. Some of you got names in your head and it hurts. People ask me a lot, how do you get so close to Jesus that when you're in the room I can feel his tangible presence? Do you feel his presence? How do you pray? How do you? And you know my answer? You do it. How do you pray? You do it. How do you get close to him? You do it. I love giving people cards. Are there any card people that go back to the 1960s with me? If not, it's, oh, thank you, Jesus. I've been feeling outdated for a minute. I mean, I believe in, like, you know, messaging and, I, you know, snapping. I hope I'm somewhere in there. I believe in it, but I love sending cards to people. Like, it's like, I love it. 
And I get all kind of people cards, ministry connections. Every time I go to somewhere to speak, I have a card ready to give to them and thank them. Do you know I buy love cards for Jesus? And they're sealed and everything. So my kids one day, whenever I'm gone, I have to wonder, can they open this? <laughs> I have to seek the Lord to find out. <laughs> right? I, I write the Lord love letters in the morning. I've waited for my husband for 31 years. I'm not married, and I'm not missing out. My soul has made love to the living God. Oh, I dare somebody to think I'm missing out. Anything comes between me and him, you got to go. And I am calling you to a strong determination in God. Are you serious? Or do you want to play on the line as long as you can? Or are you ready? In the Song of Songs, he also says, Don't awaken my love unless you're real about it. Don't you lead me on. Is it in the Bible? He says, don't awaken my love when you don't mean it. You know what he means like that? I love, I love, I love your presence. What's another one? Set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain it. I can't control it. Then when the fire comes, you're like, never mind, sir, sir, work, 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 bye. I changed my mind, I changed my mind. When I, when I said fire, I meant candlelight, okay? I didn't mean when you burn my whole life up, okay? Burn the house down. I didn't mean all that. I take it back. That's why he says, do not awaken my love until you're serious. Don't sing songs you don't mean. Don't be in there crying in the IV with tears. And then when Jesus asks you to do something, flat out say no. A double-minded wet man is unstable in all of his ways. I'm intense, but let me tell you, the one who preached this message to me was God. In my room, by myself, dying to myself. So I'm not preaching something I haven't had to sit under and cry and repent and, you know, oh, don't take that one. Don't take that. Ah, don't do that. Don't. I've been through it myself what I'm telling to you. And I can promise you the lion is better than the fox. What are the little fox's names in your life right now? And when you leave this room, actually in this room, tell it goodbye. But when you leave this room, do what you have to do. This summer, the mighty presence of God's glory fell. I'm still suffering the consequences. And a young man so touched by the power of God at the altar deleted all of his social media. Just deleted it. And he brought it to me shaking. I just did it. I did it. I, took, I, I, I deleted the playlist. I deleted the songs. I deleted everything. He's talking. I don't lay hands on him or nothing. <laughs> Under the electrical power of God. I never touched the man. The foxes finally burned. Will the foxes finally burn for you? Because there comes a moment in your life you decide no more. And if your desire is to reach the next generation who is so distracted by foxes, when they look at you for an example, and you have foxes in your vineyard too, what hope is there for them? My hope 
is that children with a million foxes in their vineyard will look at me and only see a lion in mine and say, oh, there's hope. I don't have to live like that. I don't have to be distracted. I don't have to be bound in sexual sin and worship at the same time. I don't have to. I don't have to be this. I don't have to be that. I don't have to have a million foxes. I can have one lion who takes care of it all for me. But if they see you and they see foxes on your shoulders eating at your ears too, and they see foxes eating your fruit off of your vine too. And they see foxes digging out the seeds in your garden too. What hope is there for them? Because the greatest example they've ever seen of Jesus in their life has foxes too. You're another one just like the other one. I am calling you higher. And if you're offended, it's okay. The most offensive person in my life. Can you guess his name? I have been called some stuff. I have had people post some stuff. I have been through some stuff. And the number one person who has offended me, his name is Jesus. So if you're offended, it means he loves you. It means he's still willing to grab your heart and squeeze it. God, you must hate me. And you hear those voices out there? You see how they responded to the Holy Spirit? They need us to be fox free. Hold on, open it. I want to see them. Are they still coming? Are they still walking? Oh, see, right there. The Lord had one for you. <laughs> one little one. That's so good. Thank you so much, Talita. So, those voices, those faces, guys, it doesn't matter what you're called to. If you're a worshiper, if you're a missionary, you will never not be called to children. And if you are ever above the children, I will call you straight up Pharisee. And I, I know, don't stop me, don't stop me. Okay, I know that can seem really mean. I don't mean that you're going to run a children's ministry. I don't mean you're a children's minister. I mean that if you are on top of the world, leading the song that everybody sings to where it becomes crazy. It's everywhere. And the whole stadium is worshiping under your voice. When that little child runs up to you afterwards and grabs on your cardigan and pulls on you, and they're snotty and nasty. And how you handle that child is a God moment. Because Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you've done it to me. And the, the ones considered the least of these in our population, I mean, I'm talking like statistics, research, and study. I'm not talking only biblical here. It's children. More than homeless, more than orphans, more than widows, it is children that are the most neglected and predominantly in churches. So how you treat the least of these is very important to how you treat Jesus. And maybe when you're at the top of the corporation and you're a multi-billionaire, you just fund some children's ministry. Because you'll never escape it. But whether it's children specifically, whether it's youth, whether you're going to build churches, whether you're going to be pastors, missionaries, apostles, whatever, the foxes gotta go. Yeah. 